use it. Okay, hello there. Um, this is for our students from the Patel College Global Solutions Center or the College of Global Sustainability. And we're looking at how to use Roblox for creating sustainable development simulations. And right now I'm just in a stock uh, playground land that they give you as a template to work with to show the capabilities which proves that we can effectively use Roblox once we have adopted the and adapted the code that they have and the objects because for example this grill that comes with the game and can be dropped into your world when we turn around and I can zoom into first person mode using the scroll wheel and turn on the gas you hear the sound of the gas and in fact burners all can go on. And for some reason some of these burners aren't working even though they should be working. The sound is working. Isn't that interesting? So there's some there should be some glitch in the program. It was certainly working before working fine. Yeah, I don't know what's up with the program and the code there. Let's go inside the house, however, and see that when you get to the bathroom, which I think is over here on the right. No, that's a study. So let's leave that and let's go to the other room. No, nope, that's a bedroom. Uh, where could it be? Straight ahead. There it is, the bathroom. Notice that the water features work. So if I turn on the hot water, there it is. And you hear the sound of the water running. And cold water, you can turn off the hot water, turn off the cold water. And same thing with the toilet. The toilet's interesting. Let me zoom in. Go in and sit down. Then what you have is a person sitting and the water turns yellow. So it actually turns color. And then when you turn around and flush the toilet. Oops, I'm sitting on the toilet. Sometimes it helps to be in this person's perspective and then, whoa, zooming in is a little tough. I gotta get out of here. Get out of here. Get off Get off the toilet. There's the flush. So click on the flush and it flushes and then fills back up with clear water. And then as you sit on it, it goes yellow again and then you get off the toilet and once again, you can click on it, watch it flush, and then fill. So these effects could be used to simulate flooding in Florida, for example, because you have the ability to control or to, cons uh, to show how biodigestate uh, is raised by the gas pressure or the filling of the digester and spilling over. All those physics are in the game. Also, the physics are there for if you're in the shower and you can turn on the water. Should be able to turn on the water. Why am I not turning on the water? There we go. There it is, the water's there. And it's beginning to, or should begin to fill up the tub once I close the stopper. So let's see how you close the stopper. There we go. Now that the stopper is closed, then the drain is beginning to fill with steaming hot water because I'm on the hot. I think if I bring it over to cold, then the steam should go away, those particle effects. It'll be less steam. And the tub fills and fills and fills. <clears throat> so you can imagine us doing this with the biodigester and the slow sand filters and the aquaponic systems, the physics is already built in. Now it does seem right now that it's not going to fill any further and that's because it has a drain like most bathtubs do down at this level here and so you would not expect to see uh, overspill there unless somebody removed that drain and then the effect would go all over whatever the containing box is on the floor. So it does seem like the steam went away when I went to cold. If we program it now and put it into hot it'll be interesting to see if the steam comes back. Uh, there it is. There's the steam. So you can also, by the way, close the curtain. 
you're in the bath. The physics are very good in this. You click on it and it closes. And there we have it. And I'm not seeing so much steam. There was definitely a lot of steam before. Close that off and then when you want to open the drain you open it and then of course the water level drains down. If you close it the water level stops draining. If you open it the water level drains down. So these robust physics make it entirely possible to create a game for sustainable development that involves the food, energy, water nexus. It would be a powerful way to teach that. And then we open it up. The drain, the bathroom still draining. Get out of the bath. So color changes, volume changes, height changes. There it is. Now it is clean there. And then we can go through the door. Um, the for electricity for solar you'll notice that all the switches do work so lights turn on and off and I'm not sure about the fireplace there is some button here I don't know what that button does yep turns on the gas flame which then burns so we can definitely show biogas in action in this game very, very cool. If I can get it to turn off. Come on. There we go. Sometimes you have to be close enough to let it turn off. Um, so a lot of interactivity. There is a flickering candle, which is here. It's not interactable, though. Uh, but just an example of the incredible physics that are in this game. Turn that lamp on, turn that lamp off. So we can imagine doing a game where students have to put photovoltaic panels together in the right way and then hook them together and then press a switch to make sure everything is working. So all those physics are there. This particular game is um, an interesting one. This house has so much going on in it. Let me turn on the lights here. It's a bit dark. That's funny that you need to actually turn on the lights in the game to see stuff. But when we come over here to, uh, you can sit down in the chair. Let's see what happens when we turn on the hot water here. Yep, the steam comes out. So the hot water trigger has the steam in it, whereas the cold water, well, it seems to also have particles. Interesting. Finished. So we have that Just other interact with that, with that hmm? fill. Yeah, if I close the drain there, which I just did, then we should see. And the, the water. water will never finish. There it goes. Never over. It's always there, like this, right? So you cannot. Can you just can't spill it on the floor? That depends on how it was programmed. I don't see a drain in this sink, so maybe Let's this will see. over spill. Let's see. It may have a certain limit because they define a bounding box for water effects, but you never know. No, it doesn't. It seems like it's contained and then it's not going to go any further. That's a programming thing. If we made the bounding box for the water effect as big as the kitchen, then it would spill on the floor. It's like um, magic. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And you have a drain. We have to turn off the water. And then it should start here. Does it straining down? Down it goes. And the sound is stronger when they're both on. Yeah. One. That's, yeah, it amplifies the sound. There's no insyncorator in there. We'd have to, of course, put an insyncorator underneath here if we want to show food grinding, but that can be done. Grinding does work. Obviously, you can have blenders. So we could have a food grinder that grinds up the food. That works. Um, in addition to that, you have a toaster that works. And what will happen here is it will actually spring out the toast after a certain amount of time when the toast is ready. So wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. There it goes. Boom. There goes the bread. How are we gonna feel but it doesn't let you pick up the bread. Some programming would let you pick up the bread. This I one doesn't. I have picked them. I don't know if she did. I guess you'd have to, no, it doesn't let you pick up the bread. Cupboard's open. Um, there is this stove here. 
And with the stove, you can turn on the stove and you can see the heat go on. Those hot coils there. Turn those off, close this up. And you can turn on each of the electric range oven items and then you can see them turn red. Yeah, that's electric stove. Yep, for the electric stove. And we can have a gas stove as well, I am sure. So that's pretty can cool. Can you turn on the vent? Let's see if this you can turn on the vent. Yeah, it looks like you can. Should be able to maybe have to get closer to it. Oh, it has a button. I'm not sure what the button is supposed to do. There it goes, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So like most microwaves, I have no idea how to make it work, and there's some, oh, something blocking it, which is very weird. But, yeah, there is a microwave. Close the door, and... Can you reset the time? I don't know. Because this thing is in the way, and I don't know where that thing came from, but there's start. You can go... A something. How many times? Can I even see it? Here it is. So does the time set? Yeah. Yeah, it changes as I put that on. I made it 52 and I probably shouldn't have. I've got to go back into the program and figure out where that, that thing comes from that's blocking it. That should have turned it off. Yeah, see? And then it has the countdown. So, and even this is a very interesting one, is that when you click on this boiler for the water, maybe I should turn this off, it's making too much noise, hang on. Uh, when you click on the water, it gives you a cup, and then when you go to sit at the, sit at the table, oh, that's a garbage can that's opening up, so we can definitely do garbage effects. Then you click on the cup here, and then you start to drink it, and it has a slurping effect. It actually has the guy funny. drinking it, although his arm isn't working quite well. Yeah. Swallowing sounds, and then you put that away. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, they've programmed in a lot of cool stuff, and there, of course, yeah, as we said, there's the garbage can opening up. And what else do you have? You have the refrigerator. What about the stable? Refrigerator there. The light. Which light? Oh, that, that light up there? Yeah. I don't know where you click on that. That must be a different different thing. What about the middle table? Middle table? This table. There's yeah. drawers. But you can open each one of them, right? Yeah. And uh, a dishwasher seems like see what that looks like. It does have a clickable button. Maybe again I have to be in the right position to click it. Let's see. Yeah, it's making noise. Mm -hmm. Water is going through. Right. You get the sound of that. I'm not sure how many cycles. There it is. And, there's, and steam comes out. Mm -hmm. But I no dishes. Right. Well, you can take this, this cup and then hit backspace. Oh, and the cup ended up falling into the world. Okay, so that didn't work very well. But incredible functionality <clears throat> in this game. Oh, and of course, you can come over to the living room and you can sit down at the piano. And it plays, before it was playing music, for some reason, we're not hearing that music right now. Maybe the audio is set. It must be set differently right now what the audio output is. Yeah, for some reason we're not hearing the audio before. We were actually hearing the sound of the piano. So something went wrong just a second ago here because we were actually hearing the sound of the piano as he played it. The MIDI recording was played. But yes, a lot of possibilities here for us in this game. And of course it's a world building game so there are all sorts of things that we can build into it. We put those slides in over there. Whoopsie. 
Okay. So, you know, well, if I can actually get this thing to come around and drive. So my thought is that when we have a, we could have an electric car in here and, um, and have the gas station offering things like dimethyl ether, engine start, stop. There's all sorts of parameters, so it's got to get into the right seat, though, to drive. There we go. And drive around. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't leave the car idling. I should turn off the engine. Um, but yeah, the pump should work. I'm not sure yet. If we zoom in on that, does the pump do anything? No, there's no functionality yet at the pump. Not yet in this game. In we put this spark car in. Yeah. Drive over uh, broke the law and almost killed the car. So of course there are rules that you have to follow if you're going to make this work. Left wheel, right thing, engine off. And it should be an electric car without the sound of gasoline. Stop the red light, wait for it to turn green. Yeah, I can't drive. Alright, you can tell I'm a disaster. And then there's functional uh, water slides and things. But there's buses and cars and trucks. All this stuff can be brought into the game. And uh, even this slide has its physics in there. So the sky is the limit for what we can do with this game. As we go up to the sky. And of course gravity effects are fully built in so that when you get in you can have a really good time going down the slide and of course we can use these same effects to make a biodigester that works and a hot tub and all sorts of cool stuff here alrighty so our idea is to use this world building capability to model Patel College. Instead of having just these stock things, we want students to model the actual buildings here on campus. Oh, that's fun. And, um, and then we want to have people be able to go into the classroom at Patel and see lectures here. No interactivity here yet in terms of writing. No interactivity here. But this building does have a light, so that's good. And it has a library. So we could definitely put our books in here. And I think when people click on the books, you should be able to then see some of our lesson plans. Here, these books are not interactive yet. Quantum the chromodynamics and Fisher Friends, not food. A lot of good stuff in here. We could put our curriculum, but we could make it clickable so when you click, you actually read the lesson. A lot of interesting stuff one can do with this. Does the water fountain work? Let's see. No, apparently that one hasn't been given functionality yet. And what about the bathroom in this case? should have similar functionality. Yes, so the water here works. The mirror doesn't, ironically. Okay. And the stalls. Not sure if they open or not. Maybe not. So those are closed. In there. All right, so there's a lot we'll be able to teach eventually through this, and we hope that you enjoy um, working with Roblox with all it can do. I just want to now show when we um, leave the game, 
I'm going to leave this game here. You can might have, you can have multiple people in the game with you, and so I've invited my wife and my son and daughter and Dr. Chandler Seagay from Florida Gulf Coast University. My mother is a professor at Mercy College. They've all come in the game, and you can in real time, wherever you are in the world, because my kids are in Germany, you can not only play the game, but you can work on the game. So if I click on Spiel verlassen to leave the game and leave the game, you will see that this is actually an army game we're working on here. And um, I don't want to work on this army game right now. So what I'm going to do is come over to here. This is the school land we were doing. This is what we were playing. But you can come to these three dots and go edit or bearbeiten. And then it'll launch Roblox Studio. And then you are in the world. Hit it once it loads. <clears throat> it takes a few seconds. And maybe what I should do is close this game here because that's taking up some memory on my computer. There we go. So now we're in the game. I put a box of Fruit Loops in there. That's the house that we were doing. You can edit in real time multiple edits. Uh, you can drag furniture with the. It gives you tips like this using the, the tool. Um, there's a supermarket we put in, and we were trying to put some different food choices in the supermarket. There's a cash register. So if, for example, we want to put fresh apples, then we can put apple here, and it'll search through, and then we can take apples and place them on the shelves so that when we're in the game, we can eat a bunch of apples. And there's all sorts of different apple varieties. We can put in a green apple. Oh, for example, oh, that green apple went on top. It's so big. Oh, what a massive apple. Okay, we don't want that. That's too huge. Although, if you do want that apple, you can scale it down and um, make the apple small enough. This looks like a donut. It does. You hit the F key to get closer to oh, the apple. It's bigger than the building. With yeah, a giant it's just a building. giant apple. Giant apple. So must be a very expensive apple and then you can move it into the building from the door or uh, the it's door. easier to go to the move tool and then sort of bring it in the window and then zoom down in or just hit the F key and that takes you to the object and then we should of course make it a little bit smaller too because it's got to fit in here but it's still it's still, still a massive apple I can make it really tiny though I have that you capability. Have it's the only way. And then go to the move tool, it's and then to make it fit. But it will be also interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting app. Um, so you can put stuff in there. That's just the idea. An eaten apple. There's a lot of different assets in here that you can bring in to the store, like this bowl of apples here. So that um, you can uh, pick them up and, and buy them and sell them and do stuff like that. So you have this ability to edit in the game. What's interesting for me is the ability to go to that point, uh, that house that we were in. Our house was this one with the, uh, where's our house? Is it this one here? Yeah, this is our house here. And to go inside that house, and to find out what was the script in the bathroom that we were using. And the bathroom is, I think it was down here if I recall. Keep going in, there's the bathroom, okay. So when I'm in the bathroom and I'm in that bathtub, what was it about this that made the water play? So this is bath with shower. And that's the whole object. I can hit F to be on it. Open up this part and look at the script. And there's the script that tells it hot water, cold water, water temperature, uh, the parent of that tells you what uh, drain sound to play, shower sound to play, then tells the faucet, and then it gives us all the information for how to make the water flow. <clears throat> and then if shower mode false, then do this, if that, then do the other. So the codes are all here for you. If you look at cold on, that's a button. 
and hot on and plugged, and they're in the script to find within the script. And then shower mode. And then there's drain, and drain will have its parts, and they have different meshes. That's just the drain itself. The faucet has its parts, the plug, the shower head. Similarly, there will also be in this bathroom, um, there should be a toilet in here. So if I collapse that and I go to toilet, note that the toilet has a seat and the seat has its parts, but then there's a toilet script. And the toilet script also then tells what happens, the sounds that play and the animations that play with that. So we can go in here and use these different uh, scripts and modify them so we don't have to write anything from scratch. In terms of the yard, we have the trampoline, the sand mucks. I won't be able to see any of this now, right? Um, sure, you can go in there. Well, you'd have to you'd have to hit edit if you want to. You've been invited to edit this, or have you? Yeah, you are. You're invited to edit. So, in this part of the world, let me go off of script and go back here. Go back out to the gas grill. and hit F to zoom in. Wow. So th this grill has in it a burner and the burner has a script. And there's the script about putting on the flame. And so each burner has its own attached script and then it has the flame object. And you can change all those things. And it says interactive, the burner and click, those are sounds. And then there's a click detector. Um, so we can definitely work with all these assets in order to build a game about solar electricity and biogas and solar hot water and aquaponics and hydroponics. But we've got to learn which parts of the script do what. But that's how we would start it and, um, and then modify the object. So for example, just to show you, if I wanted the grill to look differently, Let's say I wanted it to be a biodigester instead of a grill. I keep the burners, but the actual object that is in here would be um, the actual object doesn't have to look like this. This is the grill, and it has parts to it, and the parts are the different meshes. So that mesh has a different uh, aspect to it. There's a lid, there's a hinge part. So each of these could be made differently. And the way that you do that is you go to, in our case, we might go to something like uh, 3D Warehouse. And let's say we wanted to put in a biodigester uh, that we make out of a an IBC tank. So I could put IBC and the tank should come up. So there's one fish tank complement IBC tank. So take an IBC tank that's really low poly for now and download it as a collada file. Accept their terms. It downloads. Show in the folder and call it IBC tank low poly and then take that IBC tank low poly and put it in the folder that you want. I'll put it in the Roblox folder and I will uh, create a new folder for it called sustainability assets and then pop that in there and now I'm gonna extract this with 7-zip so I'm going to extract here, and then I have a model. I want to actually make a new folder for this. Let's make a folder that is called IBC low, IBC tank, IBC tank low poly, and put the model inside that was extracted, and put the mesh. What's happening here is that this is the actual model of the IBC, so I want to change this name, rename this 
IBC supermarket is on the other side of the world past past the uh, the waterfalls the, the water slides IBC low poly and then I cannot change this uh, the name of this folder because the script is calling for it but it has the surfaces the materials and textures in it but now that I have that <coughs> What I do, because it says a Collada or DAE file, to bring it into Roblox, I have to change it into a, an object file or an FBX file. So I open up Blender. Any day now, Blender. There we go. And I will import that Collada or DAE file, which I put in my Roblox folder, in my Sustainability Assets folder, and I click on that tank. There it is. The tank has come in. And what I want to do with that is I want to um, generally the first thing I want to do is I want to select the tank. And I usually have to, um, if I can, are we in edit or are we in? That's dumb. There we go. Next yeah, next, next to Domino's Pizza. Yeah, we're in there. <coughs> Set origin to origin to geometry so that that origin point or pivot point moves in. Sometimes there are problems with stuff that comes in from SketchUp. Let's hope that we don't have one here. So we select it, that object, and look at the number of triangles down here. They should never be more than 10,000 to bring into Roblox. Here it's only 3,496, so we should be good. And we will then export this as a object file. But we yeah, again pick Roblox. Roblox. We go to our Sustainability Assets folder. Make sure it exports the selection only. Otherwise, you'll get everything in the scene, camera, lights, and anything else you have. And that'll gum things up. So selection only. If it had an animation, you'd want to click that. But we're not doing any animations right now. And then you will um, export it, give it a name, and we'll call it IB, oops, <coughs> IBC Tank Low Poly <coughs> dot object and export it. And then when we go into Roblox, if we have it collected that lid, then it has a script, it has a handle, it has a part. Whatever this part is in the grill, you would have to replace the mesh. And I'm not completely certain yet how to do that, so instead I'm going to just put the IBC in the backyard and then worry about that later. But So what you do here is you do insert object and you insert a mesh part yeah. and that comes in. Um, and then with that mesh part, you name it, and I'll call it IBC Low Poly. And then when I look at it, it has a mesh ID, and I click on that. And then I find in my assets, I find the low poly tank, and I open it. And it says it's got a location file. Would you like to move it to the given location? Say no, because I don't want it to go anywhere but where I want to put it and then my tank comes in and I can then scale it and uh, one way that I scale it, it doesn't have a way that I've found yet to uniformly scale it must at some point and I haven't looked that up so I come in and I tend to go to the part and the size and just make a multiple of this so if this is point Three, is that point 0.9? My eyes are so bad. Like point 0.9. So maybe I'll multiply this by about three, and I'll go three that way, three in the Y, and three in the Z, and then my tank is three times larger. Go to move, raise it up, and then we have an IBC tank, although it's missing a part. Huh. Sometimes SketchUp or, or um, 3D Warehouse parts don't come in quite right, but that would be the, the, the part there. And if I want to test it out, 
I can save it to Roblox, but I can also just test it right here by hitting play. And when I get into the game and I spawn in my test phase, I can then go to the backyard. Oh, you're going to jump off a building? Okay. It's and then what is I go back into the backyard. And there's the IBC tag in the game, which I can sort of shove around and move. Um, so that's bringing an object into the game, and then we have to figure out how to attach the scripts to it. I hit stop here. Another thing I can do that I'll show you that makes this more interactive and fun is since I have my IBC tank in the backyard, I can go into it and I can um, I can add into here a tool, turning the tank into a tool, like the apple in the box. I can make that IBC tank a tool, and the way that you do that is go on up to the top into workspace and add to your workspace insert object and put in tool which is here call that tool if I can find it where did it go where's that new tool it should be just called tool there it is this is the new tool it doesn't have any information in it call this tool IBC tank low poly because I'm gonna have another one higher poly tool it shows the icon of a tool and then find your IBC tank which is there cut it go and find your IBC tank low poly tool and paste into that so it is a part of it it's a child of the parent and then click on the name and change it to handle when you do that there's a script already present in the game so that this has a handle it can be handled. So when I hit play with the game now and spawn in to the game and now go to go to the tank when I touch it it becomes a tool that I can carry around now with me wherever I go so I can try it out and see what the digester would look like in different parts of my house. And then uh, it'll disappear when you click on that, and that just means it went into your backpack because you can collect many tools. For example, I not only have this tool of um, of the IBC tank, but if I go forward, and by the way, this fast motion thing is a plugin I got, which is called, if you look at plugins, manage plugins, it's a plugin that I got for free called Shift to Sprint. So you can find that plugin in the game, just in case you were wondering. Um, that should go away. Why is that not going away? Okay. So I did put in the front of the house a Fruit Loops box that I also made into a handle. So boop, now I can take the Fruit Loops box and put it there. Um, oh, and the digester disappeared. Oh no, it didn't. It didn't disappear. It's in my backpack. See. So far, the objects I've collected. Now, if I want to place the Fruit Loops box in the kitchen, I can go into the door. I think if I can get through the door, is the Fruit Loops box blocking that? Oh bother! All right, I can't get through the door with the Fruit Loops box. So I'm just going to get rid of it. Anyway, I can drop the Fruit Loops box by hitting the backspace key, and boop, it drops down. Now I can take my tank, and I can try to place it. Now this is very awkward, and I haven't figured out a way to place it. That consistently, oh, it just disappeared. No, there's. Um, let me go back a little bit, and now hit backspace. There it is. Boom! But it fell over. So, yeah, it's a bit kludgy the physics of this so far. So, you're gonna have to figure out. Oops, and that one disappeared. It doesn't let me do it when there's a wall there. So I gotta step away from the wall. And now let me try backspace. There it goes. But it's falling all over the place. Ah, yeah. All right. So there's some stuff to be worked on there. Um, yeah, it's a little violent the way that it lets go, and there must be parameters that you can set to change the gentleness or violence with which you release an object, because we should be able to move it and place it. 
But if you don't want to do it in game, of course you can always stop playing in the editor and then just move it to wherever you like. I have to focus on it. And then you can test it out at various parts of the property doing that instead. And it's nice that Inas, for example, could come in here and collaborate with me and she could move objects in and we could design our house. Um, it'd be nice to put solar panels on the roof, for example. So for that, again, you would go to 3D Warehouse and you would put in solar panel and <clears throat> find the appropriate solar panel that you want. That one looks cute. Or maybe there's a better one. Maybe that's too complicated. Ah, that array there is big enough. Okay, that's a, that's a house array. So to continue the procedure so that you remember how to do it, you download it as a collada, you come in and name it and call it solar panel uh, array and then you take it and you cut it, go into your Roblox sustainably assets folder, uh, let's create a new folder for it here and call it solar panel array and then double click on that and paste that in and then unzip it extract it here and then once again we have something called model DAE they're always called model DAE so call it solar panel array you do not change this folder here that's called model it has some of the uh, some of the uh, textures it doesn't look like as much texture for some reason. This time when we open this up in Blender, we are going to import it as a DAE. There it is there. And there's the solar panels. But uh, again, I want to change the origin. So I want to move to collection, rename. That's funny mirror paste it doesn't let me change maybe I have to maybe ah, there we go I have to click on it now I've got to set the origin origin geometry and now I want to export this one which is selected it looks massive we'll see when we get into game maybe I can I can hit s for scale here and it may be simpler Ooh, that didn't work so well I need to select all of it so I'm going to select the whole thing and I'm going to hit Control J to join the mesh. Now I think it's a single mesh. Yeah. Now I can scale it by hitting S and scale it down significantly. I remember the IBC was three times too big, and that's over here. But that probably will be close to what we want. And now I'm going to export this one as a FBX file this time because those are the two that Roblox takes. You have the choice. So this will be called Solar Panel Array and export it into the Sustainability Assets folder and into the Solar Panel Array folder now. Export that. But notice this one's on a ground mount. So I'm going to do one more and I'll bring both of them in to put one in the backyard and one on the roof. Because this has a mount uh, it's not appropriate for a sloped roof, so for that we would want to get a panel that was just a panel, like for example these panels here, I believe. See what the 3D model looks like once it loads in. See if it's appropriate. You preview it that way. Up, oh, that's got that's got a frame also. We don't want a frame for ours here. I don't know. I don't know how to collect money yet. Um, this panel here, I guess we could do. This looks like it's just a panel and yeah that's just a panel so we'll download this one to a collada file do it again that one already has a name for the folder so i don't have to name it solar panel plus panel it says and so i'm going to cut that go into my roblox sustainability assets folder paste it make a new folder this should be old hat to you by now solar flat 
panel, I'll call this, so that I know that it's a solar flat panel. Drop this in there. Double click. Um, 7 zip open extract file, extract here. And then change the name. I don't want that. Rename to solar flat panel. Once again in the model thing will be the texture map. And so when we go into Blender and we bring it in. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I hope when I exported this as an FBX, I may have to overwrite. I hope that I selected, I didn't, selected objects only. So I need to re-overwrite that the solar panel array or it's going to have the IBC tank with it. Okay, so I re-exported that. Now I'm going to import the collada file of the solar panel flat panel bring it in there it is in blender you hit the period key to find things not the f key like in roblox um doesn't seem like the texture is shown on this one for some reason and i'm going to once again I'm click on it and i want to it's not letting me. Why? There's the object. Okay, now I'm going to set the origin to geometry. So the origin is that little orange dot in the center. That means that if I spin it, it spins on the actual origin instead of way far away. Um, oh, and that came apart. So you're going to have to do the same thing of hitting the bounding box and selecting everything and then hitting Control J to join them and now it is joined as a single object. That single object then can be rotated. Ah, it seems like the texture's on the other side, it would look like. Or is it? Hard to tell. Hard to tell. Um, but be that as it may, I'm going to go in here for a moment and change the properties so that it is uh, in rotation. It's at zero, zero, and zero, oops, zero, okay, so now it's flat. And now I will export this as an FBX. And I will call this, this is different, I need to go out of this one and go into solar flat panel and now call this solar flat panel. And I wanna make sure that it is only doing the selected object export the FBX. Must have been that when I did this I didn't get the lid. Yes, the lid wasn't joined. That's why I lost the lid to the IBC. So let's also export the lid so we can put it on the silly IBC. We will export and I'll do that as an object because the other one was an object. Make sure selection only IBC tank and I'm just going to call this IBC tank IBC lid. Alright, so now I've got a bunch of things that I can import into Roblox. I will go again to right click, this time near the roof. I don't know if it'll do any, make any difference. I'm going to insert an object which is a mesh part. And where did mesh part go? What happens sometimes is if you have your first mesh part, it, it goes away. So what you have to do sometimes <coughs> is duplicate with shift uh, for a second. There it is. Um, you want to duplicate things. So if I duplicate uh, so the IBC tank has a mesh part called a handle. So if I were to duplicate this and by duplicating I would um, copy I suppose but you should be able to hold on, let me see here. Let me try it again insert object mesh part. Okay, it came back. Once you've renamed the mesh part, you can put in a bunch. But if you have several different meshes you want to bring in, and we have three, we have the lid, the solar array, and the solar panel, then you would duplicate the object and duplicate it's there, control D, and then bring that over and then do control D again and bring it over. Now I can bring in three different objects, and one of them I can actually start by bringing near the roof because that's going to be one of the solar panels. 
And with that mesh part, I double click on it and I call it solar flat panel. And I don't need to make a tool out of it because I'm not going to pick it up and carry it around. So I go to the folder here and I go to solar flat panel and I bring it in. It says here, is it large? You want to resize the mesh? I'll say yes for this time. No, I do, want, do not want to move it to the location data that Blender gave. So there's the panel. Um, it's huge. So I'm going to have to uh, size it. So I'll go to scale. And again, it helps if you come in and do your scale. And I wish there was a better way to do this, but I will have to learn it. I go to size and cut it down with the X, Y, and Z. So if it's too big at 30, what if we bring it down about five times, which would make this six? That means that, or actually let's bring it down five times, which would be 30 divided by, um, yeah, it's six. And then bring this down, the Z, to f uh, 10 to maintain proportionality, so and then small. bring this down to point zero 0.05, uh, point now 10 divided by uh, 5 is point 0.2 here. There it is. Now it's the right kind of panel, and then we need to, woo, we just lost part of our house there. Um, got to grab that panel. Somehow we got on the deck and we didn't want to do that. Grill, where's our solar panel? Go to the arrow key. And sometimes the meshes get really funky. Nope. Er. Yeah, we have to find it. So that's why your names are important. So I'm going to go solar, and there it comes. And it's under the deck. That's what happened. Somehow it got placed under the deck, and it shouldn't. So cut it from there and get rid of solar. Go back to the workspace and paste it into the workspace. So it's in that level of hierarchy. Because then you can grab it. And then, because it's so much uh, confusion about the meshes here now, it actually went and it, it snapped to the roof. And it looks to be about the right size for a solar panel on a roof. And then once you have it there, then you can do Control D and duplicate it. And then hit Control D again and duplicate it. And you can begin to Control D and duplicate and um, control D and duplicate. Now you've got some solar panels on your roof. Uh, that's fun. And then we can go in and take the next mesh part, which was this one, if I can actually get to grab it. What's going on? Why are these guys in the deck? They shouldn't be. Uh, the mesh parts ended up in the deck for some reason. So I'm going to select my mesh parts that I brought in. Those other two, I've got to cut them. And i got to go up to the top and paste them into the workspace so they're not pasted into the deck. So now I can select them in case you have that same problem. I'm going to select one of them, not the other. Uh, this one here, and I'm going to make this one the solar array. And from the solar array, I will go in here and find my solar array, which is there. Hit open. It says, would you like to resize it? Yeah, it's probably going to be too large. And no, I don't want to make it into a different place. Oh, that's way too large. OK, maybe I'm going to hit, go back on that and see what happens if I do solar panel array. Do you want to resize the mesh? I should have said yes, didn't I? Did I say yes? Ah, there we go. Not that large now. And uh, got to move that about. For some reason, this solar array didn't come in with any textures. Maybe that's because it was the FBX. So something went wrong with the texture part. But uh, this is going to have to be sized as well. But first, we're going to rotate and rotate it around so it's facing what we think is south. We haven't established true south yet in this part of the game. And move it into the side of the house and then bring it down to the ground. And yeah, it's massive, and it shouldn't be that massive. 
so we must first of course we have to finish our rotation but let's bring it down in scale and again it would be really hard I mean you can just eyeball it but that's not mathematically precise but yeah it's possible to do that which we'll just do for the fun of it right now and move it about and we have to um, rotate it a bit Sometimes objects get stuck in the mesh in Roblox. And it also looks like it has to be rotated. Um, or did I make it, is it upside down? Maybe it's upside down. Maybe it needs to rotate uh, this way. And then rotate this way. And then rotate around so we got some funky stuff going on here. Rotate. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to go. That way. So I didn't bring this in very well. It's kind of funky looking. Okay. And make it a bit smaller. Smaller still. So I'm just going to leave that there for now. It's kind of funky. I'm going to bring it over. Ooh. What a mess. Okay, it's not, not cooperating. Let me click on the top part here, the top widget, and try to get this solar panel to rotate like that. And it's got to be the world's ugliest thing. But that's just the principle that we want to show. And then the other um, the other asset there, what we want to do is to bring into this mesh part the IBC lid and that mesh is here under sustainability assets, IBC lid. And no, I do not want to move my mesh to the given location. There's the lid there. You can pick that one up and it uh, needs to go onto the tank. So we will move it over and bring it down onto the top. It's too small because remember we brought the thing up to about three times its size. So once again we would go for size and make this approximately one, one, one. Except no, you don't want the Z to be one, do you? No, it's way too big in Z. So I can then scale it in Z down so it's a decent lid. Although, where did it go? Where did the lid go? Move it. And for some reason, it's completely transparent. Uh, that's weird. So there's going to be some problems bringing meshes in for sure. But that is the lid right there. And we should be able to change its color to make it easier to see by going to color here and saying, well, we definitely want a black as black lid. And it did show up for a second there, but I didn't commit to it. There it is. Okay, so now it's black. But for some reason, it's missing part of its mesh at the top. Or is that just a grayness thing going on there? I think it has more than one part to it. And it's got a weird script to it. Okay. Anyway, that's the basic idea of what you do. And the deck ended up way up there, and it shouldn't have. So let's bring the deck back in. So little problems here and there. And um, yeah. So then you save it. You can publish it if you want to. So people can play it. But we can test the play out here first. 
character goes in. And I'll bet these things are going to fall off the roof because I didn't anchor them. So let's see what happens. We go to the backyard. Boom. Solar panels are still there. The IBC tank has a weird looking lid on it now. Which I can make a part so it can be removed. Actually, that would be pretty cool. If I stop playing here for a second and go into the IBC tank lid, which was messed up in its position. And if I now um, insert a tool, which I call IBC lid, and then bring it up in the hierarchy above, hope it shouldn't be in the solar array. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nest the lid in the lid. Now I'm going to cut this and then go up to the top in the workspace and I'm going to paste into the workspace. The lid is back. still think it looks really funky in terms of the Z scale. So I'll flatten it down and then hit click. Now when I click on that it is a tool so I have to change IBC lid here to the word handle so it can be grabbed. Let's save that publishing to Roblox, save to Roblox, and then when I hit play, my character can spawn, can grab the Cheerios box, put it in his backpack, can go into the backyard, can walk up, can see the other solar panel, which has no texture, unfortunately can go to the IBC tank, can pick it up, can, and then the lid actually falls on the floor. How inconvenient. Let me put that down, go to the lid, which has a transparent face for some reason, and we should be able to pick it up, except it, there we go. Now the lid is in my hand, which I can carry over to the tank. Hey, you need to belong here. And then we need to figure out a way to get the lid onto the tank and that's going to take some scripting. And eventually we'll be able to teach how to build a biodigester by assembling all the parts and then using some script to put them together. For now the way we're going to do the game is you collect all the parts you need to put together a system and the fruit loops that you're going to feed it with and you bring them to the area where you're going to build and then you get points for assembling all the right parts. That's the first game that we're going to build into here and work on the functionality. It's nice to see that the solar array is there. We'll make a part of the game where you have to wire them properly, put in the charge controller, put in the inverter and the batteries and then click on a button to make sure it all works. All that can be done and more as we showed with the uh, incredible grill here where when you click on it the fire sound goes on and the flames go on. So with great confidence I think we can say that Roblox is going to be uh, our friend. Once you've saved it of course and you go to publish then what happens is you anybody can come to the game and they can click on the game wherever they are in the world and once they're in the game from wherever they are in the world, you can meet up inside Roblox and start dialoguing about these sustainability interventions and what your house might look like in the future because it's identical here, but this is now online live and any player from around the world can join and there's all the parts that we put in and they're just as interactive. So, cool, cool, cool. Absolutely marvelous. And he still can't get into his own house because the sliding door doesn't work. I guess it's locked, he doesn't have a key. But let's do that. Let's start populating this world with stuff. All right. Ah, one more thing I want to do before I end. Cannot leave without putting in a windmill. So I'm going to leave the game 
here. And I'm going to go back into 3D Warehouse and put a uh, wind generator. Oops, not a wind generator in real life, a wind generator in here. And if it doesn't exist in 3D Warehouse, of course you can make one yourself. <laughs> this little one here looks good. And download this model. By way of review, it says WinGen, show in folder. WinGen, 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 there it is. And cut. And paste. Oh, first make a new folder. And generator. Sort of standard pieces that one would need in order to have a sustainable situation. And we want to uh, 7-zip open it, extract here, take the model. This one does not have any textures apparently because there's no folder for model. Call it wind gen and then blender by way of review here. Import Colada. A wind generator. It comes in. If you want to animate this, you wouldn't join these things. Um, <clears throat> right now, we aren't going to animate it. What I'll do is I'll do um, Shift D to duplicate, and I will join this model. Oh, but by joining it, I made it massive. Sometimes that happens. The other one, which it was not joined, you can do a basic um, rotation in in uh, in X and we could eventually make this spin. We could bake that animation and that'll be a different tutorial we do so that we have a spinning windmill on the property. For right now we're just going to put in a static windmill. I'm going to scale it way down and bring it down using the G key, scale it a little further and bring it down and I'm going to export this and that would be export as a wavefront because that seems to include the textures better. This doesn't have any textures, so it shouldn't matter. But wind gen and put it in the folder. Make sure that selection only there. But see, it says animation. So if I had an animation baked in, I would have a spinning windmill. I have to work out the details of that. But now coming back into Roblox and into my backyard and then I will insert file 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 a mesh part which is gone from here probably because it's there's a mesh part there where is that mesh part Oh, there's a mesh part in the house somewhere. Where's that mesh part? That's weird. So there is a mesh part called mesh part, and that's probably why it's not letting me do anything with it. So I'll call this unknown part. I don't want to take the time to figure it out now. And now I'll go back to the house. Where's my house? Where did my house go? There it is. There's my backyard. And now put in a mesh part. Still not showing up. So if it's not showing up, what I will do is I will copy this with Control D. So I've got a new solar array, but it's not going to be a solar array because now I'm going to call this wind generator or house. And I'm going to go and pick Instead of the solar array, I'm going to transform it magically into a wind generator. And it looks like this location data now because I want it to go there. Boom. All right, and I want to scale this up. That didn't work very well. Let me undo that. 
So I should try to scale this uniformly. And I just don't know where the tool is to do uniform scaling. Maybe it's holding the shift key down. No. Maybe it's holding the control key. No. Maybe it's holding the alt key. No, it's not. So the only way to do this, actually, maybe it's all right the size it is if it were to go on the roof. So let's see if we were to put it. It's actually bending over with the roof. You need to put these things because they snap on something that is um, straight up and down. And I don't have, unless I put it right here on this part of the roof. Let's see how that looks. It doesn't look good at all. So maybe we are better off putting it on the side of the house. But I did really want to make it taller. So I th would think that I could just scale it in. Yeah, I guess I can. I can scale it in Z and make it Although it, now it's stretching the whole thing. That's what's awkward about this. So really what that is, is changing the part here. This doesn't have a long enough pole. And so when you want a long enough pole, you would select that object and you would go with tab into edit. And then you would grab the bottom part of this. If I can get the bottom part, yeah. Um, also, you should go into wireframe mode when you do this. and then uh, select the bottom vertices and then hit extrude in Z and just go make that pole super long so that we can get a nice tall windmill without changing the size of the windmill. Hit tab to exit, edit, hit Z to get back into solid, see what it looks like. Now you would go back and export this object and re just export right over it. And then when we're in Roblox, we can erase this, uh, delete this, and do it again. Take the solar array and control D duplicate it and change it to wind gen and the win gen needs a new mesh ID which is win gen and do we want to move it now and then there it is and the pole is much taller now which is better oops whoa oh uh, yeah there it is all right maybe that's a windier place on the property and now when we go again we save and publish to Roblox so that when my daughter goes into the game, perhaps tomorrow, she will see, she will see a house that has a windmill. And Right. Now it's not running fast when I do this, probably because there's so much stuff in here. But look at that, there it is. There's the windmill up there. That's pretty cool. So this is a house that has a solar array on the ground. It has solar panels on the roof. It's got a biodigester made from a Solar City's IBC tank, and it's got a wind generator. All right, so we started out with some of the components that we need, and we will, um, as we learn more, get back with you about how to make the windmill turn and how to add interactivity. But at least now you know how to start populating your house with sustainability assets. Thanks.